just at the glimpse. All right, we have one more quick video and then we'll get into uh, the questions.
Shut the fuck up! Do the one thing! Don't lie! That's a bad woman! Probably the civil quarters, you probably won't get your ass kicked by the police! <laughs> All right, thank you all for uh, joining us tonight. Uh, my name is Andrew Greenberg. I've been involved with on the board of Georgia Normal for a number of years and have done these lectures on uh, basically dealing with police encounters for a while. Uh, I'll say two things and I'll turn it over to our other two panelists, including our new <laughs> special guest panelist, which is introducing himself to you. Um, two things I'll say right off the bat. First of all, what we're talking in here primarily focuses on avoiding, well, number one, avoid having you turn into the next Michael Brown. We don't ever want to see that happen. That's the number one thing to avoid. Number two is we're really focused on preventing you from being convicted of anything. Being arrested will ruin your day, your week, perhaps your month. Being convicted will ruin your life. So you might get taken to jail. Cops can promise you anything. But being taken to jail for a weekend is a lot better than what can happen if you're convicted. What we're doing is setting up layers of affirmative defense that your lawyers can use when the time comes, when the real time comes. Uh, the second point has just jumped out of my head. So, John, why don't you introduce yourself? Good evening. My name is John Sokol. My background is I was a cop for 15 years. I retired 25 years ago, so a lot of the new stuff I keep it on top as best I can. My background is Illinois State Police and U.S. Marshal. So, in a couple of, a couple of departments in between. But, uh, I talk to you from the police side, and be careful, don't get your ass kicked. <laughs> <laughs> and really happy to introduce... Hi, I'm John Patrick Berry, retired Maryland State Trooper, and uh, you might remember me as Officer Jones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you want to bust the old lady. <laughs> what a douche. <laughs> So we're going to talk about a few issues that are raised by that film. Some of these have changed in the uh, past few years, and then we're really more interested in your questions. We tend to get a number of questions at this panel. Uh, we'll trade off on these, I guess, because I know you had a few to say, John. The first one I'll talk about is identification. So uh, in Georgia, uh, it is a law that you have to identify yourself, as police ask. Uh, basically, that can be considered uh, probable cause if you don't. So. In Georgia and a number of other states, if you were asked to identify yourself, you have to. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean you have to show them ID. They might very well request it. It really just have, means you have to identify yourself. And what that specifically means hasn't made its way through the courts to clarify. So cops will probably want your ID. It generally just means you have to positively identify yourself. Yes, I am Andrew Green. The result of that, if you don't, is called obstruction of justice. It's a misdemeanor, up to, a, up to 365 days in jail. Uh, one of the things that I want to talk about is uh, videotaping your encounters with police officers. Get him in it. <laughs> well, uh, up in Maryland, um, it was, uh, go right you could be t detained if you didn't get a name or date of birth. Um, and those are pretty much the two things you have to give them uh, if you're stopped or if you're even approached is name, date of birth. And if, as long as when they look you up, uh, and like maybe generally where you live perhaps, uh, that your description matches that of what you gave them, there's a really good chance that, uh, you know, they'll just pass and move on as long as you don't have a criminal record. Or, I should say, warrant. <laughs> 25 years ago, I said I retired 25 years ago, we had field interrogation cards, FI cards, and that's what we used. We'd stop somebody on a curiosity, and that was our problem cause. This person doesn't fit in this location, or this person doesn't fit, you know, what are you doing out at the mall at 2 in the morning, the mall's closed. Uh, and we'd get stop you and ask you for identification release to identify yourself or anything through the computer, and that was really more of a warrants and watch check, other than that, you know. And, and like Andrew said, in Georgia, it's required. You know your name, you know your date of birth, anything more than that, STFU. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, let's talk about the right to remain silent. Being silent does not give you the right to remain silent. You actually have to affirmatively assert your right to remain silent. Yes, you have to talk to remain silent. You actually have to say what they were showing in the movie uh, uh, before. 
Are you all together? <laughs> all together. Uh, was I like to see my lawyer and then I... Uh, I, 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 I'm going to remain silent. I'd like to see my lawyer. Thank you. So, man, I've only seen this movie year after year. Basically, turned into my brain. Oh, that was the other thing I was going to say. Uh, it's been a long con. Uh, is that uh, these are extremely stressful situations when you're pulled over. We think we know it all. We don't. Police are very experienced in this. They're trained in this. We are not. So do not think that you're ever going to outthink a cop in any of these situations. That's why you keep doing these rehearsals. The only things you really want to know when you go into these situations are, I do not consent to any searches, I will remain silent, I want to see a lawyer. Just remember those things and you'll be better than you would be if you didn't. On the traffic stop that they showed on the film, noticed, and it was really interesting, the first couple pictures, the window was down about six inches. I would suggest even listen to that enough where you can hear the officer, the officer can hear you, you can pass papers back and forth. You don't need to go any further than that. The reason is if the officer asks you to leave your vehicle, it's a lawful request. You must leave your vehicle. However, now with all these cars that have electronic key fobs and, and door locks, whatever, when you leave your vehicle, start the habit tonight. Every time you leave your vehicle, lock the doors. Every time you leave that vehicle, lock your doors behind you. Because, and I, and I really hope, I'm a friend of the trooper, I, I've never met you yet, it's a pleasure to meet you later. <laughs> I certainly hope he backs me up on this one. I've been saying this for many years, and this is what we learned in Illinois and down Florida. When you lock your vehicle, that vehicle is now a secure instrument. In order to get into it, we need a warrant. So therefore, if you have got your vehicle, you've left your vehicle, it's unlocked, windows are down, it's an abandoned vehicle. I'm here to see you shaking note. You're a bit wrong on that. Now, a house is secure but with a vehicle. Mobile transportation, you're actually, you are only having limited protection, but for example, you can still want to have a plane view. Hang on, hang on, hang on. We got a mic for you. Talk in the box. Talk in the box. Talk to Bob. Talk to Bob. Talk into it. Okay, like, well, like that. It's still a limited, it's still limited protection because it's a mobile transportation. But you need a warrant. You it depends. If there is a plain view of the incident, or you do have probable cause, for example. Okay, so we're not going to get into a discussion, you know, an, an argument on this, but I'd like to see the case law. Because every case <laughs> I've had, the vehicle's been locked, we needed a warrant. That's Illinois and Florida. A search incident to you is just civil. A search incident and arrest is completely yeah, different. Search incident Di different, different, different job. I'm telling you, when you're asked to leave your vehicle, lock it. And don't leave stuff out anyway for anyone to yeah. see. You know, in, in, in worst case scenario, even if, you know, locking it actually just helps secure just in case, because even silly stuff, you might have seen those videos where people are like, you know, you go and pump the gas, and all of a sudden someone reaches in the car and like steals stuff. It's just a good habit to get into, no matter what the law is. But uh, in Terry versus Ohio, um, the lesser, ex ex uh, lesser expectation of privacy once you uh, leave your home in your conveyance and things like that. Um, yeah, if they see something through your window that is plain view. And I'll say one more thing and then we'll open to questions. You don't know necessarily what's going to be probable cause in that situation. If you're into kink, your play bag goes in the trunk. Don't leave what they see as a rape kit lying on your back seat. It's it gets padlocked. Yeah, preferably padlocked. Uh, if you've got, uh, obviously, if there are any substances of uh, legality you are concerned about, Nothing goes in the plain view area. If you have a knife, no reason for that to be out plain view. That can go in your trunk. So I think uh, unless anyone's got something else, we'll go for questions because there are plenty of them. Looks like okay, if uh, can the officers uh, can they uh, come back here? Can they uh, um, they threaten to uh, hold my to impound the car until they got a warrant? Uh, I was you know out in the middle of nowhere and. They cannot tow it. The vehicle cannot be towed unless they have reason to tow the vehicle. If it's an unsafe vehicle, they have no reason to tow it. They can stop you and hold you until you get a warrant. Fine, let me follow you. I'll follow you to the, the court. Okay, so they are allowed to affect They can detain you a okay. reasonable amount of time. Right. Fine, reasonable. Now, the thing is, if they're not charging you, again, it's a reasonable amount of time. And we're only setting up layers of defense. You are then saying this was not a reasonable amount of time. 
each state varies, uh, but I will say that in a lot of states there uh, there is a um, an amount of time, a grace period in which you're allowed to leave a vehicle on the side of the road. Most of the time it's 24 hours, some, some places it's 48 hours. If in the event that they ask you if you need to, uh, if you would like your vehicle uh, stored or towed up, <laughs> to say, um, I'll leave it and have someone pick it up. Because if they store it, yeah, which you know, I say store, that's what that, <laughs> um, that a lot of people like using word and pound. A lot of departments don't even use that word anymore. They use stored. Um, and the uh, leaders are liable, will come pick it up, and then they then they have to take uh, an inventory of the vehicle in order to make sure that you know, the, the uh, integrity of the property of the vehicle is there. And if you have something that is questionable uh, in that vehicle, um, it's going to be looked at. Uh, even if it's in the trunk, even you know, even if it's uh, if it's totally locked up, then you know, then they can say, well, it's locked. You don't have a key to it, that sort of thing. But if it's like, if you just have something, you just threw in your trunk, like a questionable tube with a water reservoir, you know, <laughs> glass statues. <laughs> Talking to Bob. I have a couple of different questions. My uh, tragedy started when I left here one year. I've been arrested six times. My record's been expunged. Every law's been changed in all 50 states. Every officer ever put their hands on me has been fired and some detectives. My brother is a 33-year uh, prosecutor veteran, and uh, I got those six laws changed. I wanted to know how I could get involved in changing more. And the police in my county now, if they stop me, which I've been stopped a few times in my car, they usually see my name and run away. <laughs> but if they see me at a location, they trespass me from there. And as far as I know, there's no defense for a trespass. They just say they didn't like the color of your hair, they didn't like the color of your shoes, you can never come here again. I'll, I'll speak to getting uh, involved. Uh, I work with Peachtree Normal. Look up Peachtree Normal. That's an N-O-R-M-L, not an A. Uh, org. That's one way. Uh, there's Cop Watch is a good group here in Atlanta, very active. Uh, the Cop Watch is national, but there's a good local group. Uh, I don't know how far out of the metro area you live. I can't. Once you get out of Douglas County area, something like that, I, it's, there's not as much help. And the, uh, the ACLU group is excellent. Jerry Weber is one of the best lawyers I know. He's going to go, when his tombstone is made, it's going to be the one I want. It's going to say he's a man who got sodomy and adultery legalized in Georgia. I'm so wow. jealous. Wow. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so, and the, the next part of the question, if you guys want to jump on that, is there a defense for trespass? If you are on someone else's property, if you're on, uh, you know, government property that, you know, is clearly signed, that you're not, no, there's really no defense that you can be locked up. Or usually they just tell you to call If you're on private system. property, same thing, the private property owner has to say, we don't want you, and that, that's the defense. You know, or I don't. Times I the cops get the managers to say if you are if, if for some reason if there's a reason you have been banned from the property and they know that you happen to be there then yeah there's you're you're in violation okay um i'm i'm not familiar with your circumstances and you know if, if you told everyone now we'd probably be here for a while um but um it, generally speaking especially when it comes to the idea of being um, uh, involved uh, i would re research your local legislatures uh, and figure out which legislators, um, you know, are would be more sympathetic to your cause. Uh, they might use your case as a, as they you know, a, um, as a spearhead. Yeah, I, I'm in um, South Carolina, and Major Mark Kills ever slid, and he's adopted me. He's mm -hmm. got my picture next to my file, next to his wife on his desk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're in South Carolina. I've, I've provided like over 1,500 tips. I've kind of started trying to start the, doing their job for them, so hopefully I'll keep them away and. They'll know my name. All the judges in my county said they'd come pick me up if they ever picked me up for anything. That's what I'm the guy. <laughs> yeah. that, that, as far as the question, no, it's not defensible. If someone wants to say, I don't want to turn my property, you got to go with it. And I was actually trained as a cop before I was an intelligence officer in the military. <laughs> that was before I worked. That's Bob. All right, yeah. That's awesome. And uh, you're going to stay leap with the you enforcement. <laughs> Um, I've got just a basic question. Um, can police legally tell you to turn off any recording devices? Once again, that's a state by state, locality by locality by thing. I know that uh, Maryland for a while 
they were uh, it was it was against the law to record the police in their um, uh, in the execution of their lawful duties, uh, and there were a couple of cases that they, they got blown out of proportion, and there were stupid things that were done with it. You know, I'm sure some of you may have seen the viral video of the uh, motorcycle rider. And I actually ride motorcycles. I love it, uh, but he was one. Ta tearing down the highway, and uh, you know, an, a, an unmarked guy went ahead and stopped him, got out of the vehicle with his weapon, and said, you know, "Just say, get off the bike, get off the turn bike. off, turn off the, uh, yeah, turn off the engine, get off the bike, get off the bike." And uh, he had his weapon out, and at that point, did not identify himself <laughs> as a police officer, um, and uh, they had later charged the guy with recording, I was like, come on guys, there are, you know, you already had him on speeding, you already had him on negligent, all these other things, you really have to charge him with that, that's a bit much. So. I'm going to read from a document that I just got uh, from the NCSF, and it's uh, a February 2011 case, plaintiff was visited by three police officers, including officers whatever, from the Sacramento Police Department Metal Task Force. The, uh, the woman was on probation, didn't have the search, but she did record the officer on her laptop. The officer deleted the video off the laptop saying her recording was illegal. She was she countersued, she was protected by the First Amendment rights. The officer argued this right does not exist in private residences. He also said she didn't have the same right to record because she was on probation. The judge did not agree with either. To the contrary, there and this is the legal the legal finding. To the contrary, there appears, appears to be an even greater interest for such recordings when police officers' actions are shielded from public view. Further, there is no reason to believe that the plaintiff's status as a probationer would diminish the public interest in how police exercise their authority in the citizen's home. The decision stated if the people are allowed to record police in public, then they can do so in their home. So it's coming across the country. This was California, and California's Ninth, Ninth Circus Court is enters, enters some weird ruling sometimes. But this was a good one coming out of California. And to, she said Ninth Circus. <laughs> <laughs> and to my knowledge, so far, all of the cases that have advanced through the courts, the recording has been upheld. It's been upheld. Now, there are some situations where you cannot record them. Now, you do get into the wiretapping and the, and the bugging stuff if you are recording them in a private location, not your house, and it's only them talking, you're not a participant in the conversation. This is specific to Georgia. In Georgia, one member of a conversation, private conversation, has to be aware of the taping for it to be legal. If none of the participants are aware of it, then you got to have a warrant to do that taping. So, right, right. So, you can't just record cops in their houses talking to each other and think that's going to be admissible for anything, or other than a good triple X video. Anyway, who's got the Bob? He does. Illinois recently. They finally threw out their law that it was, elite, it was a two-party consent state. And I believe that was the last state where it was still illegal to videotape cops. And anyone here, anytime you're stopped by a cop, even for a busted taillight, if possible, record, record the encounter. It may make it more difficult. It may make a five-minute thing into an hour because they want to you know, make your life difficult for a little while. But it's in your best interest. My question is, is two former police officers one time I had an incident though where the cop gave me trouble, it's only, it's only happened three times, because I had one of my hands off the wheel trying to record it, and that made him nervous, and he made me get out of the car and everything. Now, all these times, you know, I never got arrested or anything, because I was doing nothing wrong, but what is, what is, if a pat, what is, is that, is that something that could happen that you might have done? Let me, let me pull back to the first thing you said, and then I'll turn it over to them. Remember, the first thing I said is we're trying to avoid Michael Brown above everything else. So if a cop is getting freaked out about you reaching into your pocket for a phone to record or anything like that, we go back to rule number one, which is to be okay. and relax. So number one, if the cops are going to be real assholes about it, you assert your rights, but you, you go at some point you'll go along and you'll fight it back in court later on. Okay. You don't risk your health and life over this stuff. Now I'll turn it over to them for the, the more present. Uh, um, when it comes to that sort of thing, I will say that um, in many uh, agencies now, um, they're, they're not just uh, you know uh, recorded from the camera on the vehicle, but also verbal recording. A lot of times, you'll get stopped. They say, you know, I'm required to tell you you're being you know, uh, audio and visually recorded during this stop. 
Um, and uh, it, what, where was it they are doing the, the badge cams? They're trying that. We're trying to get that in Georgia now, actually. Uh, that, but that's the, that's they're being tested places, and the in other agencies before they spend any money or anything like that, they'll see how that goes first. That sort of thing. The body um, cams start at about three hundred dollars for the police uh, officers, and that will uh, that carries a thirty second. Uh, image and it has to it recycles every 30 seconds. If they want to capture the image, they have to press a certain button to capture the image. The better ones start at about $1,500 per unit. Yeah, but the hope is we'll avoid more grandmothers getting shot in Atlanta. Yeah. But exactly. uh, basically, the um, the reality behind that is that if, if you're trying to do trying to record them, sometimes it's a sort of first of all, it's already going to be recorded on the car dash cam, and especially if they you know tell you depending on the on the jurisdiction, you'll be able to see the microphone um, on their lapel, and there's actually a pack that it's, that it's uh, uh, attached to. Uh, I have a lot of sympathy for the supervisors uh, at uh, you know, the, uh, the, excuse me, the corporals and sergeants who have to sit there and look through those things all the time. It's actually part of their job to sit there and you know, look and fast forward this, especially if there's a complaint that comes in. Sometimes recording it on your own isn't really going to help, and if you want to, the best thing to do is just kind of put it on, put a uh, an audio recording, and just leave it there. Don't screw with the phone at all. Just turn it on, leave it on. You know, you know, trying to be, you know, documentary at that point in the game is not a good idea. One of the big things in Europe right now, because of the police malfeasance, is more and more cars are getting dash cams, personal dash cams, because of what's going on. So, you know, that's Russian cool. videos are hilarious. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, that's how I trying to go. Oh, they, get, they get some wild shit. Now, they get some questionable stuff, stuff on there. Uh, motorcycle action recently. But, uh, you know, if you want to go that route, invest in a dash cam camera for yourself. They're a couple hundred dollars. The box is around smart. Uh, any instance when you do record an officer during an encounter, when the both of you are talking, is it better to inform the officer that they're being recorded with their audio or video, or is it better to just kind of stay silent? This is state by state for the law. So in Georgia, only one participant has to know about it. Not all states have that. So it really depends where you're getting, where you're doing this. Uh, there's some states where all the participants have to know. So. Yeah, when well, you're being busted, Google to party consent. No, yeah. Yeah, it varies by state. Put a sticker on your windshield or your window. This co this conversation may be recorded. One of the other normal uh, mm -hmm. board members has that on his car. There's a and, he, and something about any police encounter will be recorded, something of that effect. So. And he also has the, this car protected by the Fourth Amendment. <laughs> so he, he's never pulled over, so. I'm trying to help. Okay, the box is going around. There we go. Okay, uh, you had said something earlier about uh, making sure no, nothing was out so it could be seen in your window of your car or whatever. You know, like, what if you like live here in Georgia? Uh, I don't know if anybody still carries them, but like gun racks in the back of your truck or if you got... Yeah, gun racks are fine. Having a shotgun in the back of the vehicle is fine. It's not a concealed weapon. Okay, and like, what if it's like a sword? Or <laughs> a lot of this is situational. Someone's saying we just had a guy run through the store swinging a sword at everybody. Yeah, that's reasonable. Okay, so I need to have my sword. I, I would recommend any weapons go in the trunk. If you don't have a trunk, have they a go truck. in the back covered up. I have a truck and I carry it in the back. Behind the front seat. Okay. I mean, you don't know what's going to get you in trouble that day. Why Keep ask for trouble? trouble? Why ask for trouble? Why open the door? That's a great Good catch. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hey, you beat me too. <laughs> you have wonderful orchards <laughs> in Asheville. <laughs> yeah, Asheville saves your state. I've heard um, from people that are worried about sexual assaults so and Christian stories that you, can't, you have the right to drive to a well-lit area. Is that true? I'm just wondering if that's... You have any idea? If a cop tells you to pull over right then, better off pulling over right then. But as a, as a general rule, police have told me is if someone is signaling, is slowing, and driving responsibly and going towards a lit area, they're not going to cause a hassle about it. And Mike, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say that um, in that case, yeah, it, especially if you're not accelerating 
don't accelerate. Make sure you're being responsible in that situation. Um, is it, is it, is it, it's no use to get hurt over a situation where, well, now I'm scared. I want to get to that place right now, right now, right now. And then suddenly, you know, you're pulled out of the uh, you know, front door, window, whatever the case may be, and then hurt over something silly like that. But I will say this, that uh, in Maryland, probably 15 years ago or so, we had this guy who got a hold of a, he got a hold of a, a uniform, and he got a hold of a dash light, and he was driving around, pulling people over. And um, what, from what we understand, he apparently uh, bailed out of one of the uh, county departments, and he was stopping people. He didn't even have a weapon on or anything like that, because he was too nuts to get a weapon. Um, and he was sitting there just harassing people. And it didn't matter who you were. He just pulled someone over, and he would just harass them, you know. And uh, it, it, one of the one of our witnesses said, "Yeah, like we, he got frustrated one time and just, you know, threw his stuff down and got back in his car and drove off." And we're like, "Going, yeah, we wouldn't do that." <laughs> the uh, one thing I've been told by other police officers is, if you are being pulled over right then, if they're saying pull over now and not give you a chance to go, that's a nine one one call for you. Call nine one one on your phone. I give presentations for NCSF, National Coast of Sexual Freedom, and I've been doing that for 12, almost 12 years now. And you know, on traffic stops, if you're not sure, male or female, you're not sure, put your flashers on, slow down, find a well at location. And if you're really not sure, use your cell phone. We're all out on 911. You know, just verify that. Do you have a car at, you know, tracking it, uh, a vehicle stop at your location? You can ask that. Yes, absolutely. And go to a well location. And also, one more thing to, to, that you can also say to help kind of get a little on your side um, is that I moved to this location for both of our safety. Exactly. Because the Empathy. reality is, if you know, if, if cops can't see it, you know. Um, one more thing when it comes to that sort of saying, if you get stuck, when you get stopped at night, if you sorry, if you get stopped at night. <laughs> um, uh, do yourself and do them a favor, especially if you don't have anything to hide. Turn on the interior light. Turn on the interior light because that makes them, they can see inside the vehicle better. You know, it, it suddenly is like, okay, I'm here, I was here, now I'm right here when it comes to my, you know, scared and alertness. Okay. Every time I've ever had a phone call, I've been saying, what you got? Uh, all right. Um, last question. Last. And I would hang out usually, but I'm going for marijuana. I mean, the marijuana panel after this. <laughs> so join us in Crystal Bar and you can ask the questions there. Too. A G6 that I know personally has told me specifically if I ever have one of my weapons in the car, always tell the police officer. Okay, uh, yeah. yeah. Andrew's doing the flip flop. I'm with it too. Uh, I'm. We all are certified to have a weapon in our vehicle, concealed carry license, and so forth. Uh, when I get stopped, not if, because I get stopped often, uh, I let the officer know, I turn over my driver's license and my concealed permit. And he says, why are you giving me this? I said, because there's a weapon in the car. And I let them know. I don't volunteer the information. I give them my ID card, let them ask, and then they'll ask, where is, the, where is it? I'll tell them where it's at. And uh, let, the, let it go from there. Be calm, you know, and just follow the instructions. In uh, Georgia, to my knowledge, there's not a jurisdiction where that's a specific requirement that you tell the police. On the other hand, do not lie to the police. If they ask you if you have weapons, you either are honest or you shut up. What was that? Uh, Chris Rock, that right. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> You're not allowed to leave just yet. There are three more things you need to do before you leave this room. Repeat after me. I do not consent to any searches. I do not consent to any searches. Officer, I'm going to remain silent. I want to speak to my attorney. Officer, I'm going to remain silent. I want to speak to my attorney. The last one. Officer, do you have a warrant? Officer, do you have a warrant? Uh, Are my free to go? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. <laughs> this one, man. We'll go back to school on this one. Are you detaining me or am I free to go? Are you detaining me or am I free to go? Let's remember those words and I'll see you down on the marijuana panel. <laughs>
Okay. <laughs>